Welcome back to the garage and welcome back to the Hardy Motar project. In the last episode, we got this thing rolling again. I got this back on its wheels. It's now a motorcycle. It's now undoubtedly a motorcycle. So in this episode, I tried to do it in the last one, but it's just too much. We're gonna get this thing fired up. So we're gonna get the fuel tank on, mount all this, not gonna get it all properly mounted. I just wanna know if it fires first, because I'm about to start ripping things off again, you know, to fault find where it's not going. So we're gonna uh, attempt to start it in this episode, hopefully get it running in this episode. That's the plan. I don't know how, I don't know if it's gonna go on the button. It'd be nice if it just went on the button, but. You know, this bike's been apart for four years. It's been in boxes, it's been moved between houses. The engine's been completely stripped down to its bare components and rebuilt. So this has been built from the ground up, from, from bolt, not a, a true nut and bolt restoration, this one. And is it gonna go, I don't, I don't expect it's gonna go first time. It's gonna need some uh, fault finding, some playing around, maybe something's gonna be broken. I, I just don't know, I just don't know. But we're gonna try in this episode to uh, make yourself comfortable, get yourself a cup of tea, and chop see, roll the intro. So welcome back to the channel and welcome back to this little beauty. So first job is to get off the uh, Molnar Performance engine stand so we can get that clear, get the tank mounted, get stuff vaguely connected and in the right places and uh, hmm, press that start button, see what happens. So I've got myself some new gaskets and I got myself some new exhaust stud nuts. Gasket. Oof. A little bit of the old copper slip in there, I think. Exhaust fitted. What I'd really like to do is get something custom exhaust wise eventually, but uh, this will do. This will do for now, won't it? So, fuel pump connected. I think I've got those around the right way. Let's drop the bike down a bit so I can get to the top of the tank and do that lot. As part of all this, I've bought myself a Shido lithium ion battery. I know some people have said, oh, don't use, lith don't use lithium batteries on one of these. We're gonna give it a go. I've got these on me. I've got one of these on my H2. I've got one of these on my SMCR. I've had one of these for, oh, we didn't wanna drop that really. <laughs> I don't do that either. I've been using these lithium batteries for years now, probably three years, no problems whatsoever. Um, so we're going to give it a whirl. If we get any problems, of course, then we, we don't have to use it, do we? That's what I wanted to see in the manual. That's the layer of the wires on the top of the tank. Come. I think that is basically how that goes. It always was a mess, all of this. And then the seat goes on top. Obviously, I've got to connect the terminal to the battery now. And just see whether that battery... So there is a bracket which holds that battery in. I've got to locate that, though. The seat does clear everything, more or less. Uh, under there. It's, all, it's a bit of a shit design, this whole... That way everything sits on top of the tank. It's a bit of a shit design, to be honest. But there we go, that's how it's meant to be, that's how it goes. So just connect the battery up. As you can see, I've also got the, uh, the more funky seat. This isn't the Ducati Performance. I think this is actually the low seat, but it's a bit more sculpted than the standard seat. It looks much nicer. And you've got a little Ducati Performance. Well, it's a Ducati Performance seat, but it's the low seat. So just got to connect up the battery. I'll just put the, uh, the gauges on, I suppose, so I can just make sure it's in neutral, that sort of stuff. It may not fire without the, without the clocks anyway, I'm not sure. Put some oil in it. I'm going to put some real cheap oil in there because I'm just going to run this up to, walk the, to you know, warm, warm it right up, turn it off, drain that oil out and then put some better running oil in. Just some real cheap stuff, just in case there's any bits of swarf and stuff left in the engine where everything was 
vapor blasted to make sure so if there's anything left inside obviously it's been cleaned out and we assembled it but just in case i'm going to flush it with some oil just sacrifice some oil on a filter just uh, just to make sure so um let's put some clocks on i can't believe this this is like the finishing touches to this bike after four years of being apart. It's a little bit surreal. There's the front cow. So we've got the front mask of the bike on. Just connect up these last little bits. The tip sensor, I'm guessing that is. Look at them clocks. <laughs> showing its age, them clocks showing its age. Dirty grommets. We're not having that. Clocks on. You can tell, you know, it's a very old, old uh, dashboard on this, isn't it? But look at all the cat, all this blacked out. Well worth the effort getting all this Sarah coated, blacking it all out. I'm good at these aren't the final bolts. I've got the steering damper kit to go on here as well. So, so all that remains to be done: connect the battery and turn it on. I found the key. Ooh. Ah. So positive terminal, negative. Let's connect the negative first. This is going to burst into flames. We're getting a fire extinguisher on standby. Now in theory, when I turn this key, I should get something come up on the dashboard. <laughs> is it going to do anything? Ah! And there's a... Don't press start, whatever you do, because there's no oil in it. 5,700 miles, look. Me going about 4,500. It's got nearly 6,000 miles on it. Need a service, Sue. Okay, so I'm not, obviously not going to do anything further, but that's incredible. And everything, I heard whirring, I, th I heard a pump, I heard the uh, fuel pump doing stuff. Unbelievable. Oh my word, it actually looks like it might do something. <laughs> it might do something. So I've got to go and get some cheap oil, get some petrol, and I think... I'm obviously going to turn the bike over first to run the oil around the engine. Then I think I'm ready to press that button. Oh my God. So I've been to Health Rods and bought myself some of their part synthetic motor oil. So this is just, just shitty oil basically. I think it was 30 quid for five litres. Um, so that's not a fully synthetic, it's a, a semi-synthetic. They did have some mineral oil in there and I was almost tempted to, should I buy mineral oil? you know, just to get the maximum amount of wear while you're running it in. But I even think new bikes come with semi-synthetic in now. Not full synthetic, but go semi-synthetic for the running. But anyway, we've got some shit stuff. So let's put the oil in the engine and turn and hand crank the engine to get some of that oil around the bike. Like we did with the ZXR when we started it. Now that'll be the project for the winter. Autumn, winter, that bike's gonna be getting done nut and bolt restoration. That's coming. <laughs> So let us get some oil in this. This is quite exciting. This, well, this is extremely exciting, to be honest. This bike has been apart for four years. I think it's four years now. So this is, this is it. I mean, this is hopefully, Nelly, I got you, hope you got your fingers crossed. <laughs> we're we're going to try and start this. Let's get some rag ready to receive my spillages, which will be inevitable. Oh, disappointing. Is the engine even sealed? <laughs> uh, I'm about to find out. I can see some oil appearing in the sight glass. Well, that's just over half, so that's... I'm not sure how much oil it takes, actually. We, we go to the upper mark of the sight glass and then turn it over. Under the timing cover here, we've got a little notched thing and there's a special tool to turn the engine over. I should really pull a plug, shouldn't I? I should really pull a plug here. Um, let's see how it turns over. Definitely had one of these special tools, and now I did. I can't find it now, I'm going to be very annoyed. So, really, rather annoyingly, after knowing I've got the special tool, I can't find it anywhere. So, I'm just going to turn the engine over with the uh, front sprocket, you know. It's in neutral. I could drop a plug, but it's actually turning relatively easily. Okay now, so that's a bit of hand cranking. Now it's got no uh, 
no fuel in it, so it's not going to start. Oil's definitely in it, let's double check. Definitely have oil halfway up, halfway up the side glass. If the horn work. Oh, we've got a horn. I can hear a click. Oh, start turning over on its own. Okay, I don't know why it's a slight delay after pressing the button, but it's, it's, it's turning over, it's turning over. <sighs> Let's put some fuel in it. Is this actually going to work? Is this actually going to fire? Can't believe we're at this stage. So after four years of being apart, the last time I started this bike, let me just show you briefly what I said. Come on, baby. Well, that's it. That's the bike warm. That's probably the last time that bike's going to be started for a few months now until we're done. Here we go. Fuel's in it. Turn it on. Neutral lights on. open the garage before I die. I'll just turn it off quickly because the oil's completely disappeared from the sight glass, so it's, it's taken all that oil, so let's just top her up. Sounds like a bag of spanners, of course. That's Ducati dry clutches for you. I hope. <laughs> if it's, it's not got enough, not enough oil in it. It's gonna have a little quick bit of a run around. I'm not sure it's not leaking anywhere. I can't see any leaks. Can't see any weepies. been round it all and I can't see any leaks anywhere it all, it's all looks all looks good also there's a bit of smoke coming off the pipe where it's got I think where I put the uh, copper slip inside of it but everywhere looks good I don't see any uh, any I was a bit worried about the radiator but there's not you know that's all fine oh, wow there's no seeping anywhere and this has all got nice and hot how hot is that cylinder? Yeah, same temperature as that top one. <sighs> Can't believe it. Can't believe it went straight away without any troubleshooting. Unbelievable. Uh, that's four years since that engine's run. Oh, so yeah, massive thanks to Nelly for Desmo Works for putting the engine together. Looks like it's good, Nelly. Looks like it's good. What I'm going to do now is I've, I've warmed it right through, gave it a little rev as well. And obviously, it's been running so just tiniest of tiny blips. Going to drain that oil out now, um, change the filter again, and then just in case there was any, when we had it all vapor blasted, in case there was any media left inside that we couldn't get out. I mean, this, this shouldn't be, but this is just like an extra precautionary level, really. You know, I don't want to get any grit in the bearing, you know, just destroy the engine. So it's worth, for the sake of sacrificing some shitty alpha oil, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? So drop the oil out, 
um, and then finish putting the bikes back together. So for this episode, that is it, you know? So uh, in the next one, we'll basically finish this and then it'll be the test ride in MOT. Can't wait, cannot wait. But uh, thanks to everyone who supported this project for the last four years. Uh, who thought this would never happen? Who thought this would never happen? Put your hands up. <laughs> no, I knew this would always happen, but we're finally there. Wow, <laughs> it works. I'm so relieved, so relieved. Brilliant, thanks guys. See you in the next one.